Gotham Chess and myself are a fan of two things. Firstly, being chess games with many, many mistakes from both players, leading to some wild positions. And secondly, <clears throat> we are both fans of the Vienna game. This isn't the Vienna Gambit, which would have knight f6 and f4, but the Vienna game with bishop c6. Bishop c4 and b6, which is the first mistake of the game on move 3. Move 3 with the first mistake. And the game gets very interesting from here on out. b6 is a move I have never seen before in my life and probably will never see again. Because it's just weird. It's really strange. Quickly before we get into the rest of the game, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And check out some of my many other videos on my channel since I do post every single day. And with that said, I follow it up with what Stockfish describes as a miss. D3. I don't know how that could be a bad move. The computer wants knight to f3, which I mean, it makes sense, but this is also the classic Vienna setup with pawns on e4 and d3, the bishop on c4, and the knight on c3. All kind of clamping down. Okay, it's not going to let me. But all clamping down on the d5 square. b6 doesn't help black to play d5, which is probably part of the reason why it's not a good move. But bishop b7 nonetheless. f4. Again, Vienna style. This isn't the Vienna gambit. Because after he takes, I take with the bishop. I'm not sacrificing the pawn. But I get my dark squared bishop out to an active square. And when I prepare to castle kingside, my rook is going to have an open f file. Bishop b4 is played. Now here, I, <clears throat> I was considering knight to e2 just to defend the knight. But... I decided against that because I wanted to get my queen out to target the weak g7 square, which is weak because the bishop is no longer um, defending it. And black is still unable to castle because if I play bishop g4 and black was just able to castle, there would be no threat because the pawn would be defended by the king. Now, there's ideas of bishop to h6 making use of the pin on g7. But a move like queen f6 would be fine for black. Because it's knight's pinned, so it can't come to d5 attacking the queen. I don't know what's happening with my arrows. Apologies. Again, computer thinks that queen g4 is a miss. I mean, okay. <clears throat> we have queen f6 defending the pawn. Really the only good way to defend it. Because if you play a move like g6 then your light squares are just so weak. And I'm probably going to develop this knight, castle, get my rook onto the f-file to target the f-pawn. My bishop at some point can come to g5 to make use of the weak dark squares. So queen f6 defends the pawn. I play knight e2 because black is threatening. If I play, <clears throat> say I play a move like bishop g5 attacking the queen, Black plays bishop c3 with check, which is important. And after the trade, black is just winning a rook. And so I've got if I if I don't take the bishop and I play king e2, then you know, ideas like knight d4. Black black's doing very well. Black's doing very, very well. Because the queen is also threatening to infiltrate to f1, which is why you can't play king d1 here. Because this is checkmate. So knight e2 stops all that. We have d6. Which was a horrible move. According to the computer. Wanted knight e5. Forking my queen and bishop. Kind of forcing me to trade. But even here. I'm very happy with my position. Like. I've got a lot of pressure down the f file. My queen's active. My knight's going to come to d5. My Bishop's really nice. My rook's really nice. I'm going to double up on the f-file. I'm very happy with this position. 
even though the computer gives it plus 0.1, right? In reality, it's a lot easier to play with white. But d3 is played. Castles, which is the only good move. <clears throat> Threatening discoveries with the rook on the queen. There isn't, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily trapping the queen, but if black plays a move like knight e7 and bishop g5 puts a double attack on the queen, and after the queen moves, then the rook and the bishop team up on f7. So, we have queen g6. My opponent offers me a queen trade. If I take this, sure, I've got an advantage. My pieces are a, not, a lot nicer than my opponent's. I have moves like knight d5, maybe. Maybe might knight b5 attacking c7. My bishop's nice, my rook's nice. We have the exact same situation as when the queens were on the board, except I don't have a queen. So it's a lot harder to checkmate my opponent. So I go queen h3. Now the reason I go to h3 not, is, is not because I'm expecting anything to happen on the h-file, but because I want to keep an eye on this diagonal to stop black from castling. h4, the computer prefers, but it, again, controls the d8 square to stop black from castling. But I thought that he could block with a move like knight g7. Whereas if my queen's on h3, it's a bit more difficult to block the light squared diagonal. Although the computer will call me an idiot, regardless. So knight g7, rook f3. Deemed a mistake because of some line like this. Which then, so I've, I've just played all the best, the best computer moves there. And the computer then changes its mind and gives me back my advantage. So whether rook f3 is a mistake or not, I'm not sure. But the idea is to bring my other rook to f1 and potentially bring my rook to g3 to skewer the queen and the, g, the weak g7 pawn. My opponent castles, which is brave, because I've got a lot of pieces coming over to this king side, <laughs> like my bishop, my queen, my other bishop, my rook, and my final rook, is going to join the party. My opponent has three defensive pieces, arguably. But this queen is more of a liability than a help, to be honest, because it's just going to get targeted with moves like rook g3, like allowing me to develop an attack with tempo because the queen's exposed. Rook g3, again, if you think this is a mistake, because of, again, this line like this, and then bishop f2. Okay. So then if I were to take, then he takes my queen and my rook's trapped. No human, or at least no human my rating is going to see that. He plays queen f6, just getting out of the way. I play rook f1. Again, setting up ideas of bishop to h6 with a discovered attack on the queen. We have knight g6. <clears throat> which blocks the g-file. Bishop g5 is played. Again, the computer hates, like, all of these moves. <laughs> like, it really does. But it's logical, because I'm attacking the queen. And the queen only has one square that's safe, which is e5. According to the computer, the only way that this works for black is with this bishop c5 line. Because I can't move my king as my rook hangs. So I have to bring my bishop back. And then he has to play queen e5. And after this... Bishop c8. Okay. Interesting, but not what he played. He played queen e5. And I played rook f5, which... Again, loses all my advantage <clears throat> because of bishop c8 immediately. But my opponent goes to e8, which is the only other safe square for the queen. <clears throat> all the other squares are taken up by my pieces in some way. And I play knight d5, which I think over the past like 
five moves has been the only one the computer's approved of. <laughs> Knight d5 is a nice move because it targets c7, but more importantly, it threatens to come to f6 just to cause some chaos because the king and the queen are aligned like you saw in the thumbnail. So after bishop c8, which the computer has been begging for for the past five moves, that's now a losing move because of knight to f6 check. I fork the king and the queen. If he moves the king, I win the queen. Well, I actually have mate in one, so it's not even relevant that I'm attacking the queen. And so he has to take it. And then bishop takes f6. And I, I, I sacrifice my knight for a pawn. But black, with all of his pieces, all he has every single piece still on the board, right? All seven of them, and none of them can defend g7. And he has two moves. He's got two moves to get a piece to defend g7, and none of them can. None of them can do it. He, even if he plays a move like knight to e7, um, well, there's actually a... A what? Or is it like this? There's actually a mate like this, which is really pretty. Sacrificing the queen. <laughs> um, but even a bit more simply, like queen h6, knight takes f5, defends that square. I've got rook takes g6, playing on this pin, and after this it's mate. Just because I have so many pieces pointed at my opponent. He goes d5. Which is a good move, because I'm threatening in this position, if he plays a nothing move, rook takes g6, pawn takes g6, and queen to h8 mate. So his idea with d5 is to cut off my bishop's pin of the pawn, so that rook takes g6 can be met with f takes g6. And even though he can take this, black is winning. Black is really winning. So I, just, I, I go queen h6, I ignore the attack on my bishop, I ignore the attack on my rook, because I'm going to mate him on g7, and black can't do anything about it. And that's a nice little 19 move game, here my opponent resigned, in the Vienna, which, as I said in the thumbnail, and at the start of the video, I'm sure Gotham Chess would be proud of, um, seeing... Um, as he enjoys the Vienna so much. There's there's good reasons for that. It's, it's a beautiful opening. Try it if you haven't. I would highly recommend it. it it's, it's really this simple. Just get this set up. Look for moves like f4. And it, it's, it's really, really easy to play to be honest. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video. Please drop a like and subscribe. Really appreciate you guys. And with that being said. Have a good one.